Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed. Joined by my lovely, talented wife, Miss Southern Shell, way across from me now. We got a new setup in here, don't we? <laughs> We're slowly but surely improving our podcast yeah. room and Tyler, our podcast setup. Tyler's over on the boards, and you did some rearranging in here, didn't you? What up, y'all? Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's a work in progress for sure, but decided we had to separate y'all a little bit. <laughs> I like I like these uh, new mic stands. I do too. Very comfortable. Very I kind of nice. the other ones fell over all the time, and were just kind of a hassle in general. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was scared to move it because if we moved it too much, it was going to tip over. <laughs> I think the next plan is to redecorate in here. For this time? Yeah. Get Proof. the curtains down and maybe some paint? I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hung those curtains like real quick. Heck yeah. Got to do something. Backdrop. Yeah. And now it's time. We said we were always going to come back and paint. We never have. So, heck yeah. Well, before we get started, I want to talk real quick about the Palmer home. Oh, yes. So we are doing a feed a family uh, campaign for the Palmer Home, which is a local children's organization. They keep children out of the foster system, children in bad situations. They keep they work to keep them out of the foster system, and we are trying to feed a family for a year. So that's is it eight children eight, and two yeah, it's eight kids and two parents. Yeah, so they put them. Um, Palmer Home keeps them in a how in a home type situation with two parents and um anywhere between six to eight kids and we're trying to feed one of those families for a year which That's is right. about 20 grand yeah I and mean, we're it's uh coming along good we've got a lot of people raising money yeah. for them what do you win what what's the win you get to you not only do you get an outlaw patio smoker not you only. get the experience of learning to cook on that pit with me and the guys here at how to barbecue right but you got to bring a trailer to take that smoker home. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brand new pit. You yeah. come, you learn to cook on it, you take it home. That's it. And there's and there's some stuff for second and third place too, but whoever yeah. whoever raises the most is going to be the, I guess the overall and it I, does the Palmer Home site, it keeps up with all of it so you can yes, go on there. Yes, you can go on there and see like the what. leaderboard, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you want any more information, go to how to barbecue right.com forward slash Palmer P A L M E R. Yep. And that runs through Labor Day, right? Yes. It won't be long. Mm-hmm. Man, we're already like August the 11th. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. My birthday is next week. <laughs> National holiday. Yeah. It'll be 28. <laughs> <laughs> How old will you really be? 48. 48. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm old. Michael asked me, and I I'm said. i got two more years till I'm 50. I mean, I remember when I used to think you was 50, it was done. You, you just retired. You put you out to pasture at 50. <laughs> what do you think now? I'm like, man, heck no. I'm trying to revitalize my life. <laughs> I'm trying to get in shape a little bit. Start, start exercising some, eating right. Can't just all be barbecue sauce. and The next 50 isn't going to be. And, be, and Miller Lite. <laughs> next, yeah, the next 50, I, I'm, I, I've done a lot of damage this first 50. I got to do a little bit. Repair this next 50. <laughs> uh, this week, you and Tyler took a trip to Royal Oak headquarters. We did. We did. Um, so we did a little test. We did a test run last last week at the uh, Smokehouse. It was alive because Royal Oak, they, they've got a really cool cooking pavilion over there at Roswell where their headquarters was in Georgia. And um, they do some different events over there. Uh, you know, we've been kind of partners with Roll Oaks for several years now. I mean, I've mm-hmm. cooked on Roll Oak all my life. It's kind of old Diz was the charcoal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was, yeah, we've been working with them. And we get invited over there every once in a while. I've been over a handful of times. Um, and they, they wanted to do a TikTok live event because, they're, you know, they're trying to get their social going and everything. They do Facebook and TikTok just like we do. Um, and they had some of their ambassadors come over. Well, this was my turn and I got to go over there and cook with the Ninja, uh, kind of in their outdoor kitchen out there. They, they, uh, they bring, what they did was they brought, I think, I don't know how many employees they have that's like on campus there, but I think it's over 50 and they did a company lunch for them. Um, so they cooked ribs and pulled pork, stuff like that, had all these sides and stuff. And then at the very end, me and Craig did like an hour, a little over an hour on TikTok live. 
and they just and they were free reign to cook whatever they just wanted it to be kind of interactive yeah and the employees were kind of your audience yeah there was like a live audience yeah. they could ask questions and they would just watch most of them were just wanting to watch yeah but it was cool it's um, kind of like emerald live yeah it, that's what it reminded <laughs> that's what i told them at the end of it i said i like this this is different than just doing a recipe video but i'd never done it that style before so it was half like you would do a demo for a class and then half a recipe too, you know, so, cause, but I had to make sure they were all three cooked at the same time. And they gave me this hour block. So what can I, I was like, what can I do to get these three things cooked? Cause they wanted it cooked over Royal Oak. You know, mm -hmm. that was kind of the part of it. We were using their fuel to fill the, to get these smokers to roll. And I used the pellets on a Yoder. They had a brand new Yoder YS 480 which I'm real familiar with. I've got a couple yeah, of those yeah, myself. Yeah. It was a brand new Yoder? Yeah, brand new one. And how, how did it compare to the old Yoders? I, man, have they, they haven't changed that much. I think they've updated the controller in it, but other than that, it's the same grill. Heavy duty. But, hell, yeah, like a tank. Yeah. It's, that's the Yoder trademark. And then they had another Yoder that was like, I guess it was a big charcoal grill, but it's like a battle tank. Uh, the whole top, like it folds up like one level, like a piano opens up where they yeah. get to the keys. You can access the grill there, but the but you can open the top up further so you get access to the full cooking grate. And you put your coals right under the grate. Uh, so think of it as like one of those charcoal grills where you can raise and lower the ash, you know, the fire yeah, pan. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. There's a thing on the side that you can roll it up. I don't know what model Yoda it was, but as far as like a, it's pretty much a grill. But we two zoned it. I put and filled it up with lump on one side and had it good and hot and ready for the demo. And then I cooked. Um, I did. So y'all saw me do them. A, it's probably been a month or so ago on TikTok. When we come back from that uh, fishing trip we did where we stopped at the gas station and got those little chicken littles. The uh, I did a version of those, but firecracker style with my firecracker sauce. That was, so what is the chicken littles? It's basically you take boneless, skinless chicken thighs and you cut them up into pieces. And then you wrap them and bake them and you season them and skewer them and you cook them until the bacon's done and then put a little glaze on them at the end. So Super, it's, a, it's like a football. It's a great football yeah, food appetizer is. or whatever. It's a bite of chicken wrapped in bacon. That's it. It's, it's basically a, a chunk of, sauce. yeah, the fiery, sweet and spicy sauce. This is the first time you've used, so you have this firecracker sauce and you've used it on chicken a lot yeah. and it's really good. You've, you've you came up with it years ago. It's really yeah. simple. It's like brown sugar. It's vinegar, it's hot sauce, hot brown sauce. sugar, a little vinegar, uh, salt, and crushed red pepper. Yeah, super easy. But it just makes a thin, fiery, sweet glaze. And you've that's the first time you used it on these bacon wrapped chicken yeah. bites. Yeah. But man, it was dynamite. Oh, you can serve those at a wedding. They're good enough because it's a perfect little bite, you know. Yeah. And the bacon gets brown um, when you do it over live coals, like at the. So what I did is I always take the bacon, the boneless, skinless thighs and trim any of the fat off of them. You know, yeah. a lot of times you get those and there's some fat on them. So you trim that off, kind of cut them in half, and then take those halves and cut them into chunks. Usually you get three decent chunks on the white, on the bigger fillet side of the thigh, and then you get a couple, you know, two chunks off the small side. Yeah. So you're but getting you five be... pieces out of one thigh, which is pretty good. Yeah. You know? And then time and I take thin bacon and cut it in half. Cause you want it to wrap around and you don't want it to come unwrapped when it's skewered. So you wrap, you want enough bacon to wrap around it, but one whole piece is way too much. So, you know, you, and you might it'll get, get by, depending on your bacon, you might get about a third strip of piece of bacon on it. would go around a chunk. Depending on how long. You're, yeah. Cause some of the bacon I've noticed is shorter. shorter some of it's some longer. Of long, yeah. Right? Um, the thinner and the cheaper, the bacon, the better, as long as it holds together, you know, yeah. cause you, you want it to cook. The thighs cook pretty fast. But you want the bacon to cook done. I mean, it's not getting crispy, but you want it cooked done. And that's why you don't want to double up the bacon too much because it won't. Yeah, it won't get done. Chewy. It won't get done. It'll be chewy. Yeah. yeah. But I cut them up into chunks. And then usually I just, like these, I just season with hot rub. You could, I mean, seasoning, you could go wherever. If you wanted to marinate it, you could. Um, the ones in the video, I did uh, swine lice, yeah. Mississippi grind on it. It's really good on chicken. But you could use whatever, and, and you could make these with a different sauce, too, to give it different flavors. Like, if you want to have multiple choices. But Almost like wings. Yeah, it really, <laughs> really, you could. But boneless, skinless thighs are cheap, and it makes a bunch of them. And so, you know, just get you some skewers and get you a bunch of chunks of chicken and some bacon. And then once you get them all skewered up. So you up, season it underneath the bacon. Yes, I season the thighs first. And I, what I did there, for the sake of time, I cut up most of them and had them already done. 
So when I got there that morning, I took the thighs and cut them up except for a couple for demo. And I've seasoned them and I put them in a Ziploc bag and threw them in the refrigerator. And so Just they were kind of dry, brine. dry brine and in that marinade. So they're really good and seasoned underneath the bacon. And then you wrap the bacon around, and I'd like to just top it with some hot rub too, just to give the bacon some color. Because you don't want to get it too salty. It don't take a lot, but you want it to have some look to it. Mm -hmm. And then once you get them all skewered, you can get about six to seven of them on a skewer. Um, I've used wood skewers. These I use metal skewers. You try to put a little space in between each chicken bite? Not really. I usually do them kind of tight on there. You could, but they want to flip around and stuff. So, I mean... It's it to me. I just stacked them on because it just did really well. Yeah, I have done them individually with toothpicks, and like so we, uh, you know, I used to do a version of that a long time ago for weddings and stuff yeah. like that. And we were doing some catering, and I just got them little chicken bites, but I cut them a lot smaller pieces, and it was really just a you could get four or five out of a strip of bacon because it was just a little little bite. It wasn't a chunk. These are more of a chicken. It's more nugget or tender size, yeah. you know, because it's yeah. a, it's a more substantial. It's a man sized chicken chicken bite <laughs> with a half man piece of bacon. Chicken. It is. It's two biter, two yeah. biter, you know. But so we we got them skewered up, and then I don't I like to cook them indirect, and so they work great on a pellet grill. They work great on a charcoal two zone fire, and then start them all over on the side and let the bacon cook. And they only take, man, it was what a forty forty five minutes is all it took. I went halfway, flipped them, got some color on the backside, turned them back over, brushed my glaze on, and then to really set them off, I put them right over that hot lump coal and let them kind of get start getting charry. But you got to watch them. You can't walk off too far when you do that because, you know, that sauce will car- over caramelize or you got them over hot coals, they'll burn. So it takes about one to two minutes, and then I flip the whole skewer again, one to two minutes, and they're pretty much done. But having them on the skewer makes it easier to move them around, makes it easier to flip them all so you're not turning every individual one because, I don't know, I probably did seven, eight skewers worth. So that was... And that would feed a lot you know, of people. Yeah, yeah, that was, I mean... That feed a good it group. 70, it was probably 60 of them, maybe. 60 little bites out of two packs. It was just, this was just two packs of chicken thighs. That's it a wasn't a lot for a fantasy football draft. Yeah, no, it'd be excellent. It'd be excellent for anything like that. Yeah. Any type of party where you like an appetizer or just something you can grab. You don't have to have utensils to eat. Um, if you did want to individually toothpick them, it'd be great for sitting on a platter and just picking up like that. If you did individually do them, I'd put it on a wire rack to cook it. Yeah, that would be easier to move them around yeah. too. Yeah. You also did uh, pepperoni pizza sliders. Yeah, and those were I played will it slide. <laughs> so y'all, will it slide <laughs> anything on what, what can go on a hawaiian roll with cheese and, and and make a good slider but these were i mean you know this was the kid version really i mean because i did one that were pizza sliders that were like what was it spicy ranch pizza sliders yes that yeah. was a recipe we did for a football cheese food way back and yeah jalapeno well these i didn't go spicy because i didn't you know yeah it was just a regular safe version so it was like the Hawaiian rolls split in half. I took a stick of melted butter. I added some of the Italian stallion, um, a little bit of garlic just to give it, you know, it's like a gar. basically made a melted garlic butter, splashed a little Italian bit of Worcestershire in there. Garlic butter. Just to give it that little, little sandwich feel with the Worcestershire and um, put, put drizzled some of that on the bottom bread. And then I started with sliced. See, real quick. That's where I think people go wrong with the little baby sliders is you need a little bit of that butter inside the you bread. you got to have it in there. I, I don't think it tastes as good if you just put it all on the top. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too. And and with these, like, the original way you make those little sandwiches was you make them and ham you wrap Swiss. them up. It's it's inside ham and the rolls. But the butter goes on that bread. Then you put your filling. Then you put your top bread. I mean, the original put, way, most people just put the butter on top. I thought they let it soak in. Was that your gra- grandmother's way? To let it so, soak yeah. in. That's why because so you better. taste it all the way through. Yeah, but they don't. You don't need to do that and then throw it right in the oven. That butter and all those seasonings needs time to work. So when you wrap it up, you stick it in the refrigerator, and that's why it's great for tailgating or for football parties or any kind of thing. Like you want to take these two, prep them the night before, let them sit in the refrigerator. Then when you get ready to cook them the next day, all those flavors have come together. It's all soaked in the bread. And so, so you took, well, so 
you took your Hawaiian roll and cut it in half, put the butter. Yeah. But then put slices of mozzarella, like a whole little pack of those. I guess it's Hormel. I don't know what brand. Sargento. Sargento pepperonis. The little you ones? could use. Uh, they, yeah. They were just pizza size. Yeah. You know, they weren't big slices of big pepperoni, but you could put whatever you want in there. Like, yeah, you could do salami. Yeah. You could, you could do you all kinds of stuff, but I just did pepperonis and then Cabacool. smothered it with. <laughs> I'll have to go I'll have that. But I smothered it with shredded cheese, like shredded mozzarella over the top, put my top bun on, poured some more butter all over the top. And then the key here is wrap it in aluminum foil. Don't just throw that right on the grill. I've made that mistake before. The top bun gets too hard. It'll get brown fast and it'll get too hard. So wrapping it up in foil and then putting it on the pit at 350. Now, could you do this in the oven? Heck yeah. I mean, that's what <laughs> the original recipe was. But it's much more fun to cook it outside on the pit. So I just put it, I had that Yoder running at 350. Uh, it went on the top shelf. It's all wrapped up like a slab of ribs. It don't have to be super tight. You just yeah. want it all covered up. It full. just kind of helps it steam yeah. and That's melt, right. get all melty. And and then 30 minutes, uh, I, I unwrapped it. I like, took the full back and folded it into a boat like I would a slab of ribs to glaze. Took the remaining butter that I saved and brushed it right over the top. Because it was still soft. All the, I waited. What you want to see there is the cheese melting. So when you unwrap it and peek in, if you can raise one up and it's all stringy and the cheese, mm-hmm. that, that part's done. Melted that butter or put some more melted butter over the top, sprinkled it just with the shaky Parmesan cheese in a can, and then left it uncovered for 10, 15 minutes and went back. Because at that point, I was doing some other stuff. Well, I went back and checked them, and they were golden brown. You could tell they had a little crust on top from that Parmesan tree. They're perfect. That's when I pull them off and serve them with some warm uh, rose marinara sauce. That's a, it's super simple. But you talk about going to a party, man. Those are the first things that go. Yeah, people always. will grab those. I mean, it's a it's the tailgate party food, you know. <laughs> It'd be so easy to take anywhere. Yeah. I'll do. I'll be doing some of those for, or some some version of those for my fantasy draft. You also did um, skirt steak tacos. Was it skirt steak you went yes. with? Yes. Yeah. They had, so I gave, I, I kind of, we just flew in. Me and Tyler flew over there. So we didn't go shopping or bring a bunch of stuff or anything. I shipped some of my seasons over that I needed and gave them a shopping list. And they had all my stuff sitting there, like separated out. And so I wanted to do a taco because I knew I could do those pretty fast. And it was a good way to show yeah, like up, a you beef. know, grill something. Uh, yeah. So I had the chicken, the firecracker chicken bites. I had the sliders, and I did uh, skirt steak tacos, and they had some skirt steak, and it was, um, I don't know where they got it from, but it was like a Wagyu skirt steaks, and it was like a big pack of it, like a huge pack. There was probably. I think it was like a restaurant depot type deal? or I, No, they'd ordered it somewhere. It wasn't oh, like, okay. yeah, it wasn't food service. This was, I mean, he was like, we had these in the freezer. You want to try them? I bought some backup flank steaks in case that don't work. And I said, I'll open them up and see. When I opened them up, there was probably six or seven uh, skirt steaks in there. And them jokers were more. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know where y'all, why y'all had these in the freezer. But, man, these were excellent. I knew they were going to be good. Yeah. And so I just did a light trim on them. And um, for the seasoning. So what's a light trim? Just removing it? Yeah, just, you know, sometimes you get that skirt steak, and it's got a lot of that inner fat in it still on it. Mm-hmm. So you got to knock some of that thick stuff off. It's not going to render. You don't want to eat it. They don't clean them up real well when they're in a package. And so you just want to clean those skirt steaks up. Just take off any of that excess fat and silver skin. And, you know, skirt steak, they're they're not but maybe three inches wide a lot of times. But they're, they're real thin. They might be 24 inches long, yeah. and they're odd shaped. So I kind of straighten them up, take some of the thin edges off, just make them look good, like a good piece of meat. And then um, then I put them Does in. Does that affect the cooking? <clears throat> um, I know you do it for appearance Not purposes. really. I mean, you you definitely want to take some of that thicker fat off, but I mean, leaving those little edges and stuff, they're going to char up because I mean, there is, uh, you know, the thickest parts of them, it's going to take it a little bit longer to cook, but skirt steak is one of those things where all you need is hot coals. It's the kind of beef that you want to cook fast or close to the hot coals as you can get it. You're just really charring one side, getting that flavor on it from whatever wood your charcoal you're using, flipping it over, doing the same thing and then getting it off because you can overcook them so fast because they're not, I mean, they're not much thicker than a brisket slice. A lot of times in places, you know, it's not like it's a ribeye 
or something that's going to take a little time. It, it don't need much. You're just scaring it with the heat. Really, you're just, you know, knocking the cool off of it with hot <laughs> coals. But it gets charry and all those, and you get all yeah. those flavors on it. And you get flavors from the, the wood or the charcoal you're cooking on and, you know, the beef itself, but then the seasonings you put on it. A lot of people like to marinate skirt steak. You see that a lot of times in like uh, Mexican or uh, Brazilian or, you know, South American cooking. They, they'll do some different marinades and stuff on it. I kind of took a play on that with a dry seasoning. So I used lime, fresh lime juice. It's kind of like a binder. I squeezed that all That's over it. Idea. And then I took my grande gringo. I hit it with a little bit of AP. And then the grande gringo uh, was the main seasoning on it. So I seasoned it pretty heavily with the grande gringo. And then come back and sprinkled it with fresh cilantro and just kind of patted it in. Oh, before you cooked yeah, it? Yeah, before I cooked you it. You put, put fresh it, cilantro on Put it? it on both sides. And then, then I kind of took them and stacked them up and moved them around yeah. and kind of, kind of working on each other and put them let back them in the Ziploc. Let yeah. them put them back in the Ziploc bag. And I let them just hang out. So I did the majority of them earlier that morning. And they so they sit in the refrigerator and kind of dry brine. And then the ones I did for the demo only had a couple that I seasoned up and did the same thing to show everybody what I did. And then um, got the grill hot, you know, filled it up with charcoal, uh, rolled up charcoal. What grill were you cooking on? A Weber. I mean, that's what, just for a, cooking skirt steak. That's probably my favorite grill to cook on. Just like a 22 inch. Yeah, normal old Weber kettle. Um, and I got, so those coals got hot, uh, threw those on there, and I kind of had an assembly line going. My plan was to do like a two zone fire, like start a chimney of coals and put it on one side of the Weber. So that way I had a cool side, but I had probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 pieces of those skirt steaks. I had kind of portioned out to cook and they had already filled up the Weber with coals and put some tumbleweeds in there. So when we lit those first thing, I was like, hey, it's going to take a little while for that grill to settle out. And I guess it was probably halfway through the cook. We pulled it back over there and looked at it. And a lot of the coals were ready to go. And then some of them weren't. So it kind of created its own two zone, but then by the end of it, it was ready to roll. It was just a hot coal, but you're standing there with it. Cooking skirt steak is something that you can't just walk off from. You got to, you know, cause you're on, I'm talking really two minutes aside and it's pretty much done. Is it, what temp do you think is in, internally Shoot. there at that point? Internally or the or grill? It, no, the internally. Oh, after two minutes. Oh, I would five. say it's one, 120, 125. 125 in the thick yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and some of them got, I mean, nah, I wouldn't say I cooked them over. They were probably just about right. Yeah. Um, But I kind of did an assembly line. I'd put a few on the grill and then started cooking them. And as I'd flip them and move them, I'd put another one on and just kind of worked them mm -hmm. up and sit there at the grill. And then, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. I did it all live. They were all cooked, and I just kind of put them over the side and let them rest about five minutes before I sliced them. And when you slice those, you kind of, I like to take skirt steak because it's so thin. You can't just get a straight slice. It'll look like the fajitas you get at the Mexican. Yeah. You got to put a bias on it a little bit yeah, yeah. so you can get some of that grain of meat. Uh, the, the main thing is when you cut skirt steak, the, you know, the pieces are kind of long and rectangular. A lot of people would want to cut them just straight up in strips. That's totally opposite. Pay attention to how that grain's always running across it. So you've got this long piece of skirt steak, and most of the time you're going to take it and chop it or make a cut in it to where it's about three or four inches wide and then turn it sideways and t uh, and tilt that, your knife yeah. at a bias to where you can get a taller slice and you're kind of cutting at an angle down it. And you can get those nice, pretty strips of skirt steak. And – like when I, so I was cutting that, the knife was just falling through it. And I was like, Oh God, it was, I mean, and then I got me a piece and you didn't even have to chew it. It's like you put it in your mouth and your tongue just melted it. And so I made Craig come over and try some, I was really like, that was the best thing. The, the chicken was good. The sliders are always, I mean, cheese yeah, and pepperoni, yeah. garlic bread. How can you go wrong <laughs> yeah. with that? that was, uh, but the steak was phenomenal. I mean, that's where I think. Uh, that's what blew people away there. I mean, people just come up at the end and, wiped out a pan of all that skirt steak <laughs> they weren't putting it on shells and, and well so we did stuff. we took i took tortilla shells while the steak was resting and just put them right over the coals on the grill i cooked the chicken on and uh you know it don't take what you, a second or what two. are you using flour street just flour corn, yeah i'm you know taco corn, taco, corn shells are okay and i know it's authentic and people talk about you if you don't use them I'd much rather eat the flower shell. I guess it's the gringo in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. It's a, I know it's, it's a texture thing. Depends on the taco yeah. for me. 
It depends yeah. on the taco. Yeah. yeah. I just, but I don't know. Time, especially yeah. if it's a steak taco like that, I want the flour. If I'm eating the corn, I want it to be enchilada. Yeah. I want it to be rolled up. I want it to be, you know. Smothered in sauce. Yeah. Smothered, yeah. Smothered in a good sauce with cheese all over the top of it. I don't want to have to pick it up because it never fails. You pick up, and even if you double those corn tortilla shells, they they start breaking apart. And I hate, there's nothing worse than eating a taco and the guts fall out mm-hmm. of it. I don't want everything coming out of my taco. And they just don't do it. A flour taco holds together. Now, I like a crispy uh, corn shell, like a you know crunchy taco shell. Those are good. To dip in salsa and cheese dip. Is that <laughs> what you're talking about? <laughs> Make a taco. I'll eat a crunchy taco. Okay, yeah. Um. So anyway, so you grilled your shells. Yeah, just grilled those for like a minute. They didn't even take a minute. It's like yeah. 30 seconds till they start to bubble a little bit. And then we took those. Um few strips of the skirt steak, squeeze some lime over it, a little bit of the Mexican crumbly cheese. Uh, yeah, they they had a case of Fresca mm. okay. crumble cheese, and Tyler crumbled up me a bowl of it. But you crumbled that over it and hit it with some more cilantro and, you know, the lime and the Valentinas. You can't go wrong. That's, That's simple. simple. And those feed a lot of people. Like that skirt steak, if I had to guess, it was probably a – four or five pound pack of skirt steak. And by the time I got it cut up, I had enough to fill a small pan, like, you know, and that'll oh, go a yeah. long way. It'll go a long way. Cause you're cutting it so thin Yeah, and you can only put, I mean, three pieces of skirt steak on a, on a small street taco shell is a pretty good bit of meat. Yeah. When you serve yeah. them with tacos like that, especially if you could throw out some yeah. grilled up chicken thighs. Oh like yeah. Up, That's the it. ticket, man. You, you do chicken. You can do tacos. the, you can do those talk, ta- the skirt steak and the boneless skinless thighs. You could season them different ways or season them the same way. and Cook them at the same time because it's like the burn-ass chicken. Yeah. You're just doing the same thing over hot coals fast, getting a char on it, and then cutting it thin like Slicing that it. too. That's perfect for a taco yeah. bar. That's, that's one of my... That'd be a fantasy football draft food. It'd be too. excellent for it, yeah. I think we did like a... We did a Mexican, Mexican theme one, one time. Yeah. yeah, I did that. I don't think it was skirt steak I used. I think I used a... Brisket. Brisket, yeah. I made brisket tacos. That's right. And I mean, you what can, do you like better, a charred up piece of really good beef for for a taco, or do you like a brisk, like a soft a braised question. down briskety meat for a taco? I'm probably gonna go with like your skirt steak. You get the char, you get yeah. those more those type flavors. I'm with you. More. I like them. They're both good, but I think I, mean, I, like I ain't the, kicking a brisket taco out of the, yeah. You know, I ain't. me either. <laughs> but I think I, I do think that the uh, I like like the skirt steak or a flank steak or something like that for a taco too. And I just want my brisket, brisket. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some little yeah. uh, you don't need all potato the stuff salad or something. Fancy yeah. it up. I don't know. When you served it, you did pickled red onions and. Same kind of little cheese, and, uh, cilantro and lemon. Yeah. But I always do a sauce. sauce. Yeah, like a green, green. It's good. Yeah. It's good. But that was my, that was a fast trip. Well, I just flew, we flew out Wednesday and came back Thursday. Mm-hmm. Just over an honor. And you used uh, Tyler as your sous chef. Yeah, yeah. So Tyler helped me prep, but he also ran the TikTok live camera. I kept watching like camera angles and stuff. Right? And uh, Craig kept going, all right, TikTok, all right, TikTok's looking out. I was like, well, Shell told me to fill, <laughs> <laughs> fill in first. So I was like trying my best. Hopefully, yeah. We did, did go to an awesome restaurant in Roswell. Yeah, I was going to ask, did y'all eat anything good while you were on there? Yes. Y'all didn't get in until late last night. It was like, I really had yeah, to sub 30. Uh, um, 1920 Tavern, is that what it yep. was? 1920 Tavern. 1920 Tavern in Roswell. If y'all are in that area, just going to that little part of Roswell is cool. It's uh, Roswell, it, Georgia. <laughs> Roswell, Georgia. Yeah. Roswell, Georgia. 1920 Tavern. <laughs> they, uh, it's a, we, I didn't know it. I've never been to that part of that town. Yeah. And it's a small little town anyway. We, I've always been out it's by the interstate. Kind of a suburb yeah. of Atlanta. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a little many. history. They said it used to be like a rural farming town before Atlanta kind of sprawled that way. And now people are moving out there. So it's just like any other burb, you know, they get their own little unique thing, but they took a lot of these old buildings that were already there and they didn't demolish them. They revamped them. So you can tell, like you go in the bathroom in this place and it's a, you know, one holer old school metal latch on the door kind of, but it's cool. And it had a shotgun feel to it. It's a small restaurant, but all the restaurants right down this whole area, it would remind you of like, 
going to Oxford to the square or even going to Athens or, you know, something like that. It's just little, uh, small business owned restaurants, cafes, uh, bars, but it's just one strip of them down there. You can tell it's kind of like the place to be. There's a brewery down there. Um, but we went in this place and you go in and it's like boots on the wall, kitchen right in the middle of it, small kitchen, like a galley. And then they were turning out some amazing stuff. Like they had, they're, they're, I sent you a picture of the menu. It was extensive. Oh, so we went, there was. Which is unusual for a nice restaurant. To do so much. To do so much and do it well. Yeah. You know? We had crab cakes. We had calamari. We had, this was all appetizers. We had Cajun shrimp. We had short ribs. There was a bunch of we y'all. Had, what, just you and Tyler? There was nine yeah. of us. There was <laughs> nine of us. And like they said, let us order. And so they said, well, well, okay, that's cool with us, you know. They had shishito peppers. They had crab and artichoke dip or crab, something like that. Yeah, spinach, crab, and artichoke dip. They had what was the best bang, bang bang cauliflower. I never would order that. Never. I was like, why would you know why ruin a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> bang bang anything's good. I was like, why make vegetables with it? <laughs> but they ordered it and I was like, you know what? It looks pretty good. So I tried a piece. Phenomenal. I would definitely order it again. And it was like it, the cauliflower wasn't like, I was expected it to be crunchy and have that old kind of funky cauliflower taste yeah. to it. No, it wasn't like that at all. Had a good texture. I'm not <laughs> saying it's like a. So the way to get you to eat cauliflower is to deep fry it. Yeah, deep fry it <laughs> and put it in a good creamy, spicy sauce. But it was so good. It was really good. What was the best um, appetizer? Oh, how you can't beat short ribs. Oh, okay. I mean, it was like short ribs on like a sweet potato cake. And I didn't even try the sweet potato cake, but the short rib was melting your mouth. So good. Yeah. I don't know. The shishito peppers were up there, too. Yeah. I mean, do, do you like those? Yeah. I, I wish you'd, you need to do a recipe. With yeah. I've, you know that pan, that grilling pan that, that the they sent us? What? Hex clad. Hex clad. Yeah. yeah. That would be perfect for doing those shishito peppers. Like fire roasted shishitos. I need to do some of that. They got them at Kroger in a bag. I've just never done them. Yeah. They're really good, though. Yeah. But that was really good. And then, so after we had all these small plate appetizers, they were like, all right, y'all ready to order entrees? And I was like, man, dang, we ate all this. We don't need nothing else. But everybody ordered. So I was supposed to go first. I was like, no, y'all go ahead. I didn't want to be the guy that ordered the steak or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but on their menu, they had uh, everything from fish to pasta to um, steak to lamb. I mean, uh, even a paella. Well, I kind of, you know, I got a rule. If I see Chilean sea bass on a menu, I'm usually going to order it. That's kind of my thing if I see it. Because usually if it's on there, it's pretty good. And so that's what I went with, and it did not disappoint. Was it, it good? Was, yes. How was it? For, like, how, how did um, you serve it? It was a filet of, well, I guess, I don't know if it's a filet or just a big chunk. You know how sea bass is kind of yeah. thick, dense. But it was a big Big serving of sea bass, uh, kind of pan sauteed a little bit because it had a slight little crust over it and like a sauce, like a lemony, buttery kind of. Was it served over sauce. like a rice pilaf? Um, it was served over vegetables. Some sort of. Um, I think it was like it was squash and zucchini and peppers okay. and stuff like that. Um, and it may have had a rice too or something. I don't remember. There was a lot of Tito's <laughs> before that came out. <laughs> the double Tito's club sodas and lemons were in effect. I'm and then the doubles. I like the Tito's. Heck yeah, that's a, that's been lemon. my drink of the summer. Zero calories, I guess. Does Tito's got zero calories? Uh, yeah. Google that for we'll me. call it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get, yeah. Tyler? Uh, so I got like these lamb chops, but they weren't like traditional lamb chops. They were more like the porterhouse Ooh, cut of lamb yes. chop. Yeah. That's when they come out. I was like, dang. And I it was, entree envy. it had like a barbecue demi glaze, demi glaze, demi glaze. I don't know how you pronounce that, but, uh, they're served with like a crispy spinach, uh, on, on the bottom. And then like a really, really, really good, um, Yukon, they were like cut up Yukon gold potatoes, but cooked like real soft and with a little, like, uh, there was like a kind of like he said like a lemony butter cream sauce kind of served with the potatoes that were really good so you said uh crispy spinach yeah it was like i so did they, they fry it it almost kind of seemed like okay. it and then it was like lightly salted lightly salted after it was cooked and it was like really it like melted in your mouth it was kind of interesting like i never had it like that before it looked good yeah it was really good 
I someone know. got the short ribs. Someone got a fettuccine, chicken, fett- grilled chicken fettuccine. Uh, two people got, they had a shrimp and lobster spaghetti that looked awesome. And then somebody got a steak and somebody got uh, salmon. No, t- uh, tuna. That's what it was, yeah. seared tuna. So it was all over the board at the table. We were setting that, what people got. To me, when I see a restaurant with that big of a menu, I'm like, this is going to be a little sus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be able to perform all that. They, I don't know how they did it. Mexican restaurant. In that size, in that size restaurant, putting out that kind of food. That's why I say it's worth, I need to go back just to see if it's as good as I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say this, when they told us we were going there, um, they like, it was one of the, the higher ups, uh, favorite place to go. So when anybody comes to town, that's where they always want to go. Cause you don't go there because there's plenty of room to spread out <laughs> no. or, you know, it's private Yeah, because we were like at the very back of the shotgun, little built little restaurant in like, it made a booth, but it was like a three-sided booth. And then me and Tyler were two tables and there were people right behind us. And we were pretty much all just, you know, on top of each other. Yeah. Elbows. But, but it was, it felt kind of family style because the way we ordered all the appetizer and people were just passing stuff around and everybody. So it was a great place to sit and get to, have conversation and all yeah. that. Um, so Tito's, I liked it. I had fun. Tito's vodka is calorie free. Yes. Because it only contains 70 calories per 30 milliliter bottle. Wow. So I pretty much. It's practically. Yeah. Yeah. It's practically on the diet. <laughs> I wonder if I feel so good when I drink it. It's energizing. <laughs> You're losing You put it in club soda and a little squeeze of lemon. That's all you need. So last week we filmed a couple videos. We did. You did a what a patty melt. <clears throat> Man, that was better than a water burger patty melt. It was. I don't know if the video made it look good, but the uh, the it actual was... burger itself would hurt you. It was huge. <laughs> yeah, it was huge. I don't think water burger gives you that much meat. Heck no. like their patties aren't the same patties that we were using. Heck no. What what kind of beef did you use? Just eighty twenty ground. I like that. That's when I'm making a burger, I'm at least a 80 20. You just made a simple patty. About simple how big patty. were the patties? They were like five ounces, I think. We, we didn't really have a scale to weigh them. Just kind of measure them out, divide it. I think it was like two pounds of meat. We divided them out as I tried to cook one for everybody. For the video, we just did two. So I needed four, four patties, about five ounces each. Uh, I always order my water burger patty melts with the mushrooms and the onions. Mm-hmm. So I started those first on the Weber griddle. Um, a little bit of clarified butter to get them going, season them up with some AP, move them vegetables. That's a great thing about a griddle. You cook something, you just slide it over to the side. You know, it sits over and hangs out and gets even better. And then I started the burgers. That is, yeah. And it just, yeah. it just stays warm. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Now, it's hard to beat a charcoal grilled hamburger, but there's something about a flat top burger. I it agree. starts getting crusty and all that juice stays there. It's cooking in. I mean, I love it. It's to me a charcoal burger kind of swells up, yeah. You know, and the and the flat top burger kind of they just stay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, and them. you get the crustiness mm-hmm. on the outside. And a, and a burger like that, man, I turn it one time. It goes about six to eight minutes. Season it with some salt, pepper, garlic. That AP, flip it over, hit it again with some seasoning. Let it go another six to eight minutes per side. Yeah, yeah. Usually, that's just that's about all I do. My trick is when I'm cooking burgers on the first flip when I start seeing. Uh, it kind of start making a little bit of a crust around the edge and you start seeing the juice, that red juice start coming out of the top everywhere. It's time to flip it. Usually it's got a pretty good sear on it and then you flip it over. And then when you see that juice start, you know, it, it'll have a little color to it when it's coming back up through the cook side. But when it starts kind of getting clear, that that's the indicator is done, but it takes, you know, 12 to 14 minutes tops for, for about a medium burger. That's medium. usually how I roll. I was going to ask that. Yeah. yeah. I like mine. I don't mind if they have just a slight pink. Yeah. You know, I definitely want a little pink in mine. That's, I mean, it's probably not recommended. Yeah. Don't do it because I do. It's just how I like them. <laughs> so you hit it with pepper jack? Yeah. Pe- a slice of pepper jack cheese on each burger. Got to have that Texas toast. So I threw some of it down, made a. Uh, do you grill both sides or do you only No, no, no. I only grill one side. I don't like my, I don't like when I'm doing a sandwich like that or a grilled cheese. I don't like that inner, inner to be toasted too. <laughs> 
Do you? No, I'm with you. Yeah. I like the outside to be toasty. Even a BLT. I mean, well, it depends on if I make the toast in the toaster because it gets it on both sides. That's yeah. the only time it's acceptable. <laughs> but if you're doing it like in a toaster oven or just a regular oven, broiling it, just one-sided toast. And then you use the creamy pepper sauce. Creamy pepper sauce. And we kind of made our own Yeah, it's, using blue plate mayonnaise. You got to have the blue plate. Yeah. That's what makes the sauce so good. I don't care what anybody it's says. That's what makes the burger so good. There's there's blue plate and then all them other brands. That's pretty much the way that's I draw the line in the man in the sand. Blue plate and then any other mayonnaise. Yeah. Uh do you see Pittman's talking oh, yeah, crap? Yeah, yeah. He's he's a, he's a Duke's man. If you're from Alabama, hey, that's what him. happens, yeah. I guess. Some people you just some can't people help. like it, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, if there was no other mayonnaise on the planet, I, I mean, you know, if I if I didn't have blue plate, I gotta have something. So, but I I will not eat Miracle Whip. I'll eat mustard before I eat Miracle, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is not mayonnaise, Whip, man. It's not. It's not. Some people mayonnaise. think it is. No. Well, there's a, there's a whole faction of people that think it's better than mayonnaise. Yeah, some guy in the community the other day was making your mac and cheese recipe, and instead of the mayonnaise, he put Miracle Whip in it. And I was like, that would just like it just cha- it's fine if it's good, but like uh, it would change the flavor. It would change the flavor of it. Yeah. <laughs> First, it would add a bunch of sugar. Mm-hmm. Miracle Whip's really sweet. Yeah. I mean, next you'll be trying to tell me that old sandwich spread's good that comes in a jar. Have you ever seen that? My I granny always had it in her refrigerator. Do you like it? Oh, sandwich spread. I think Blue Plate has a sandwich does, spread. Do they? Do, do they? Yeah. they do. Yeah. Theirs is the best. Blue Plate's the best. Though. Do you eat Blue Plate sandwich spread? I, I would. You got to bring a jar in here. <laughs> We'll taste it on yeah, air. I just, that's something I could, I don't eat olive loaf and I don't eat sandwich bread. <laughs> but if you're. You eat pickle loaf or olive loaf or whatever it's called. That lunch meat that had all the little flakes and stuff in it. Uh, I'll eat sauce, but I'm, I'm not eat. eating that. Oh yeah. Like the, with like little chunks of cheese and stuff yeah, inside of it. Yeah. Never, no, that's ham loaf. I'll it. do ham loaf. I don't yeah. Know. I olive like the loaf. ham. It's got like slices of olives and stuff in it and the meat. The mystery. I know meat. what you're talking about. I, I can't remember ever trying it, but I kind of want to now. <laughs> <laughs> you eat you that with a sandwich spread sandwich. Spread. You have all kinds of textures going on. <laughs> with sugary, sweet deli meat with all these different chopped up stuff molded into it. But if Can't you are going to be cooking a burger this weekend, make sure you choose the best mayonnaise for your best burger. And that would be blue plate. And that would be blue plate. <laughs> <laughs> so then you topped it all. Cut it in half. Yeah, yeah. Well, I added the uh, stack the burger patties up on the bread, spread the creamy pepper sauce on the bread, two patties, the mushrooms and the onions, top top uh, toast with the more spread, and that's all you do. Simple, spread. yeah. And it's a better roll your sleeves up and get ready because it's going to be juicy, <laughs> and it's going to be cheesy, and it's it's going to be delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those burgers you got. Uh, juice dripping down your elbow yeah oh yeah it is it is if you cook it right it should be yeah if it's dry you did something wrong (laughs) um you also made a drink it was called the transfusion yeah that's so golf course classic like you know so um i've never i don't know if i've ever been to a golf course that didn't have a transfusion in mississippi they call it purple drink like most places you go you give me the purple drink they don't do it quite the same way like i've seen different versions of it Mm -hmm. the real version is now, my choice, Tito's. Choose Tito's. Best box. I, or it's, I just like it. I don't know why. Cathead's okay. It's the second choice. Pinnacle would be next. But uh, anyway, <laughs> two shots of vodka. So this is, a, this is a stiff one. Two shots of Tito's and then ginger ale. And you, you basically, you fill your glass up with ice. Two shots of vodka, ginger ale to within about an inch of the top. And then pour in, just pour in grape grape juice. And it's probably, if I had to give you a measurement, six ounces of ginger ale, one ounce of grape juice, that's probably the recipe I'd follow. But I use a tall glass, pack full of ice, vodka ginger ale, one-inch headspace, grape juice. Stir it. Don't shake it. Don't shake it. You don't want to get it fuzzy or fizzy. And then golf course special, get you a styrofoam cup. That's the best part. Pour that in the start. Nobody knows what you're drinking. Then yeah, it could be anything. It could be tea. Yeah. It could be water. Tastes cold. Tastes cold. Keeps the ice. That's the transfusion. You get a straw. Yeah. Purple drink. <laughs> you also- now they make it at the at the what was the name of that? I don't remember the name of that golf course we're at. It's over Tupelo. Not Hawks. It, it might be. 
something like Hawks Creek. Crossing or Hawks Creek or something. Anyway, they do one and they make up grape crystal light and diet sprite. So it's vodka. So it's calorie. Yeah. Have, yeah it's back at, hey, <laughs> you're watching your calories. You know, you want cutting back a little, double up the vodka, two <laughs> shots, <laughs> diet sprite, and some grape crystal light. It works. It's very refreshing. Too. It is. It's. I mean, it's one of those that get you back right. If you made a bad shot on the course, you'll forget that. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's just, it's all around good drink. I, I noticed when you were making this that you have a lot of drinks that'll get you back right. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, you got to have those. You've, yeah. you've built a little repertoire. Of the get back right. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, you know, when you're out there in a barbecue contest, you're out there for three days. Hot you know? and sweating and hungover and, you know, <laughs> you need something to bounce you back. Yeah. Get you back in the game. I like. I just like that you have an arsenal of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You need a transfusion. <laughs> feeling, feeling a little puny? <laughs> Dr. Malcolm Reed. Yeah. Well, see, that's what the ginger ale does. Ginger ale is a stomach soother. So if you're feeling a little queasy or something like that, What's the um, grape come in to play? Just the flavor. But see, it, now that's the... I put too much. You I mean, can't... Uh, if you put too much grape juice, it gets strong and kind of gets a bit. Yeah. It's not a good flavor. The grape juice is the key. you got to get it in the right amount. Just, just enough to turn it to where it's a little purple color, but not, but not to too much to know that you're drinking grape juice. It shouldn't have that deep grape juice flavor. Yeah. I put too much when I made mine. And yours? It wasn't that good. No. I like it. Some people do it with just Sprite. They don't use ginger ale. But That's the ginger ale today. soothes you. Yeah. It kind of calms your stomach down. You also, if you need to get back right. <laughs> <laughs> How about a water? No, yeah. no, no, no. You need something. To get I mean, back usually right. you don't start with the transfusion. It's like, like you don't roll out there at 8 a.m. and say, all right, I want the transfusion. Unless you had a rough night the night before. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had one of those days where you get out all night and then going to play, play 18 the next morning. You also did Millionaire Bacon. Yes. That one I stopped down at my buddy Frankie's place here in town, Primo's, the new meat market. And he had he has Nooski's bacon in there that they slice for you. Like if you want a you know half pound of bacon, fresh bacon sliced, they'll slice it up. Well, I haven't been able to find um unsliced slab bacon. I mean, you never see it anymore. When I first did a, the bacon burn ins years ago, I could buy um, bacon Uncut like that, yeah, slab bacon, yeah, at, from at Sam's. Sam's yeah. yeah, it was, uh, it was. I mean, just in a regular pack, like you could buy regular bacon. They just hadn't sliced it, and they quit selling it like that. I don't know why, but it was that. What brand was that? That was a th- right, right, thick cut bacon, but it was unsliced. Well, that's Nooski's. It's it might be some of the best bacon I've ever had. It is really good. It's so good. It even smells before like raw. It smells good. It's not. I mean, it's bacon. It's been processed, but but I I said Frankie, I just need a piece of it. How big a piece you want? Just you know, give me two pounds or whatever. And so I wanted to cut it myself to make millionaire. Now millionaire bacon is just I guess what Southern Living or someone called candy bacon. I've always known it as candy bacon. But I've always just bought packs of bacon and did it, you know, see, rub and brown sugar and kind of grilled or smoked it a little bit till it gets all tacky. With this, I took that thick Nooski's bacon and cut it myself. And you cut it pretty Oh, I cut it about brisket thick. slices. Yeah. I mean, it was a thick piece of bacon. And I gave it a little head start on the smoker just so it wouldn't burn up. Because if you put a thick piece of so bacon like that on there first, on it, nothing bacon. on it. Just put it on a raised rack just to get it started. Ten minutes. I have my I have my uh grill pellet grill running about three fifty. Um put it on a wire rack, stuck it on there ten minutes, took it off. And at that point I mixed up brown sugar, cracked black pepper, uh, some uh maple syrup, and a little bit of cayenne to give it a pop. And it kind of makes this grainy like syrupy slurry. And I took that and spread it on both sides of the bacon. Um, put it back on at this point you want to put it on a full line sheet pan because it's going to make a mess. That maple syrup and brown sugar is sticky. It's going to run everywhere. And if you just get it straight on your grill, it's going to be a pain to scrape off. So do it in a pan and not, and line the pan with foil so the cleanup's easy. It all stays in there. 
And you don't have to really worry about the backside as much. I like to put some on it, but it's going to kind of get covered as it cooks. It's going to seep under it. But you do that, you paste that over, and you put it back on the pit for until it gets done. And you can tell it's done because that bacon will it'll no longer be real floppy looking or you know feeling if you pick it up. It'll it'll start to brown, do its thing, look like a piece of cooked bacon except it's caramelized all over the top. It's almost like you cooked it in caramel. And then I take more brown sugar, a little bit more cayenne, and a little more black pepper and sprinkle it over it. Just sprinkle it over it the last five minutes on the top side. I don't do it on the back sides. I don't want to flip them. But you you put that back in for five minutes, and that brown sugar just melts and makes this coating over the top of it. And I took them out. And just you got to get them out of that pan as soon as you take them off the pit. Um, and because they will be cemented because they it'll to cement it. to it. Yeah, you need to put them on something. Like I put them back on a greased wire rack to spray it with Pam and let them kind of sit and hang out. Um, that way. And it can stick to that wire great. You might need to come back and try to move it every once in a while too because that stuff is sticky. But I ordered me one of these uh, bacon racks off of Amazon, and that's what I did in the video. It's like a two pieces of wood dowel with a wire string yeah. across the top, and it's got little clips. And you just take that bacon once it cools and clip it up on there and, and get you some scissors and serve it. And you could even put some more maple syrup in a little cup holder. I didn't do that, but if you want to, but, you want to read and that's, it. and that's millionaire bacon. I've seen people do it where they put pecans in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different variations you could do, but man, that so, new skis bacon with that particular way you did it was some of the best I've ever had. So when you go to uh porch and parlor, well, remember porch and parlor, we went there mm-hmm. in Memphis to restaurant and they have it as an appetizer to baking flight or tasting. And so they'll have that same little setup with the little wire. And they'll have one piece of regular a clothesline for it's it's clothesline, clothesline for bacon. bacon. Yeah. And one piece will just be standard standard bacon cooked in the oven. And it'll gradually go like the next piece might be black pepper. Black pepper bacon. And then sriracha chili bacon. And then the millionaire bacon. And it's like five different pieces of bacon. And you cut off and you can sample each one. Everybody at the table can Yeah, you get a little so pair cool. of tongs and a little pair of scissors and cut you a little bite. Of bacon. That's that's such a great appetizer for five five pieces of bacon five different ways. I mean, if you're a bacon junkie like I am, uh, the porch and parlor is what as good as yours was. I don't know if it's the oh, quality no. of bacon or yeah, you know, or just that magic touch. I think that that is a really good like if you want to give somebody something nice for Christmas, bake up some millionaire bacon, put it in a nice little. Tin. You could. What if you gave them like ordered the thing from Amazon, wrapped it up. Oh yeah, cooked them the bacon and had it wrapped up in like a little box with tissue or whatever, or just give them a hunk of Nooski's bacon <laughs> and the rack and let yeah. them cook it there. You could mix up the little brown sugar and cayenne and black pepper. Yeah, as and a, have it in a thing, a, this, and then tell them just to add maple and give them maple syrup. Man, you got a that's a great present. Heck yeah! Even if they don't make the millionaire bacon, just eat the bacon. You know, yeah, just yeah. Eat you the got bacon. stuff to do it. Yeah, is um, that one released yet? Is it? No, oh, okay. yeah, that, come out that'll yet. come out next week. So if yeah. you listen to this, um, so do you remember last week we were talking about uh Joey Chestnut and eating the hot yeah. dogs and you what you it was like, what it would be like? <laughs> so somebody in the community saw, sent us this. Did you see? I it? saw that. Did you read it all? I said where, where he says he does spends a lot of time in the bathroom and cussing or something. <laughs> what was it? What did he say? So he is uh the most that Joey Chestnut has consumed is seventy six francs in ten minutes. 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Holy Can you even imagine that? No. Can you imagine them just 76 hot dogs just sit here on this table and then just moving that to your stomach? That's almost that's nine and a half packs of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the bun. Yeah. Nine and a half packs? Right. It's 10 would be 80. Does he put multiple in his mouth at the same time? And the bread. I don't know the technique. <laughs> so not only is he... I could, so could you imagine just eating? I'm going to eat. Nine packs of hot dog buns. Just go eat just the, no dogs. That's amazing right there that you could somebody could eat nine packs of hot dog buns. I'm impressed that you can get it get it down in ten minutes. Yeah, you know? in ten minutes. Oh wow. So, That's a lot of bread, yeah. man. He has reportedly eaten nineteen thousand two hundred hot dogs. Holy smokes. In his lifetime. So what happens after he eats seven? 70- How old is he? <laughs> that's a lot of nitrate 
so what happens after he eats 76 hot dogs yes. in 10 minutes? First, he sweats. Yeah. Then immediately after, you know, once that last hot dog goes down, he just starts sweating like crazy. And he says the sweat kind of smells like hot dogs, too. Oh, like everybody tells him. I just like to be on that plane with him. <laughs> Y'all were on a plane yesterday with no, no air. AC. Was it smelling like body odor? I Me mean, and Tyler were seat one. You know, we were the, the first throat. row, first you one. Lucky, so we, yeah. yeah, yeah, we got lucky. If you'd have been in the back, it was getting a little little gamey. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> So he does. He says that he can't really smell the hot dog in his sweat, but everybody around him tells him it was. But he can tell that it feels sticky and his sweat. His sweat feels sticky and greasy. What does a hot dog sweat smell like? What does a hot dog smell like to you? Describe the way a hot dog smells. Delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Like when you boil hot dogs. That's what I'm imagining. Just if you're, you know, the old stagnant, the old stagnant pot of hot dog water. They just smell, it's got a salty kind of, I don't even know, greasy, salty smell. So he sleeps on the couch. <laughs> so how long does that, how long does the sweat last? Does it say? Uh, so uh, he says about two days is when it takes, Dang. well, it takes his body about two days to really start feeling normal again. Yeah. So I, it, he doesn't say that he pukes, but he says he immediately has to go to the bathroom, which I, yeah. Oh, man. But it takes him two days to start feeling normal and it's really hard on his body i guarantee it you got the hot dog gut for two days <laughs> <laughs> i mean it would take you two days to process that much food i guess yeah i wonder how many Seven, pounds i think he just lays on the couch for i don't know what a days. what the ounce is on a pack of hot dogs is uh i'm do that math for next time yeah, yeah. <laughs> how many hot dogs are that's crazy so they man. asked him do we st- he still loves hot dogs he'll eat a, a, just a regular oh, he'll just dog. make a hot dog grill a hot dog or yeah. something yeah he says his favorite way to do it is with cheese whiz and grilled onions Oh, huh. the Joey Chestnut. Yeah. I'm going to have to do some homage to that then. Yeah, that'd the be a good dog. one. I'd eat a cheese whiz grilled onion hot dog. Cheese whiz, yeah. cheese whiz and grilled onions. Anyway, that's a little. Top to wit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do have some questions for you from the community. Oh, yeah. There's been some good stuff in the community. There has been some good um stuff in the community. Uh, did you know that Coleman has stopped manufacturing those party sacker coolers? No way. What? That's the word. Should have stopped talking about them. They probably can't <laughs> keep up with demand. Uh, the person that mentioned this in the uh, community said there's no comparable substitutes, and the ones going on eBay are going from sixty to hundred bucks. Heck yeah, y'all got oh, some vintage, like probably like. <laughs> I can't. Get, we can't get rid of them now. <laughs> Hey, no, that sucks. All Why? Of a sudden they come That's a great us. cooler. They had a whole line of them. Like, we just had the one size party stacker, but they had multiples like the 2K stacker and the mini stacker. And yeah. All that. Somebody will surely come in and there's not, they'll have to go, they'll have to go to uh, see if we can get somebody to knock that off. And, <laughs> yeah, we're going to start yeah, manufacturing yeah. party stackers. Heck yeah. We're just going to call them barbecue holders. Yeah. <laughs> The rib box. The rib box. That's what it would be. It's a rib box. So, um, Brandon, he had a question. He said he's cooked pork butt, pork butt several, using this method several times in the past. No problems. But he did an overnight pork butt. When he woke up, temp was 205 internal. Let it rest as normal. And when he went to pull it, it was just tough, hard. Mm, I don't know. Must have been a bad butt. Yeah. Or... Something I thought of too is, you know, we've had this talk before where you can take meat too far. Yeah, but usually and then it's it not. It starts coming backwards. It'll it be don't, mushy. Yeah, it don't lock up to where it's too yeah. tough to pull, though. The only time I've seen them do that, it's like maybe you had a fault. It could have had a false reading. Yeah. If it felt, I mean, you know, always check it with another probe just to verify that, hey, this thing sucks because you could have been, he could have been sitting on the bone or something. It really or wasn't. Fat pocket. Yeah, or some, something was giving a false reading and fill around that and see because if it had cooked overnight and it rested, man, I, I've never had one ha- hard to pull with that. Most of the time they're too soft. Yeah. You know, it's falling apart. You can't hold it. So I mean, indicators on port butts, um, will the bone come out? Like you can always try to pull that blade blunt a little bit and see if so it's going to say- come on out. Check it with another probe just to make sure. Let's say you uh, wake up, your pork butt saying 205. Yeah. 
205, it should be much. You go to wiggle, almost, yeah. Mean. You go to wiggle that bone and it's tough. And you go probing it and it feels tight. like I it keep feels going. Tight. You're just yeah. going to keep going. Yeah. You might have got a bad one. Something happened. Something, something is not letting that butt go. You keep going until it gets soft. It, I mean, will it ever? If it's. I've had, I mean, the only way I've had them stay tight like that, I've put too much, uh, maybe you put too much of a salty injection in it or it got too much seeds, too much salt or sugar, some kind of way cured that meat and made it that tight. You know, it, it turned, it almost hammed it basically. So if you would have injected it and seasoned it like a day or so before, maybe it's sitting in the fridge too long and it cured the meat and changed the texture of the muscles. It's going to be tight. It's going to be hard. Uh, it should, it still should fall apart though. Yeah. When you I mean, get it up high enough and it lets go, it's going to fall apart. The texture is just going to be tough and stringy. It's not going to be melting your mouth moist. You know, he said that he's used this method many times before. And it's worked. So you got to attribute that to a bad butt. He just had a bad one. Something was, you know, something was wrong with it. He's a hard living hog. <laughs> hard living. Yeah. He was tough. He had to run. He must've been a run or something. <laughs> the the exact same thing happened to me while I was using a Traeger Timberline and I was using the Traeger Timberline internal thermometer uh, with the, you know, probe and stuff. And for the first two times I cooked a butt, it was fall apart. It was perfect. And then the third time I did it, it said it was, it was reading like 204, 205. And I took it out, and when I went to go pull it, the top half pulled, but then the bottom was, like, super solid, so I wasn't getting anything out of that. And then the very next time I cooked, I stopped using the internal uh, probe on the Traeger and started using a, I think it was, like, Thermoworks Dot. And it was, like, and when I got that spot on a 205, it took a little bit longer. That pulled apart, like, perfectly. So, I mean, that goes to, it, yeah. it probably was a faulty. Yeah. Faulty Could have been. Probe. Yeah. yeah. Bad equipment. That's uh, why you always get the handheld and feel around the butt. You know, you don't ever see us take it. Oh, yes, yeah, done. Let's take it off because that one said it was. Even if even if I use that same probe, I don't care what the number is. I'll take the probe yeah. that's in it out, go in somewhere else, go in. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go to butt four four times. You're looking each for side failing. up front, and then behind the bone on one side, and beside the bone on the opposite side. That's what I'm going for feel because there's some muscles in there that are super dense on that I bottom mean, side. When those overnight pork butts, <clears throat> I've probed them before, and they're reading 186, but feel like butter. Yeah, and sometimes they do. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, if it's now. a slow, slow cook, gentle heat cook, and you've rendered it down there, they're never going to get to 200. Yeah. 190 is about as far as you can get those, but they are done, done. You know, they've let go of everything. If you're cooking them that if long. If you're cooking them that long and slow, yeah, yeah. Okay, one more question, and then we'll wrap up. And I think this is a great question. So they said they hate the cleanup. So they were wondering, can they cook with a pan and a wire rack? So we used to do that in comps, and a lot of people still do, um, because you want to keep your cookers clean. That's what people. That's what guys were thinking. So when you're first doing your initial smoking, like for ribs, brisket, pork butt, having it, you definitely want to have it up off the bottom of a pan if you're cooking in a pan. Now, what I have found is um, there's nothing wrong with using the pan, but I like to use the shallow pans because or a sheet pan or a sheet pan Covered with the wall. rack. Yeah. Now that's only for the first stage when you wrap them, it's not going to be big enough. But the reason being when you use a tall sided aluminum pan, like the kind, you know, the food service pans we buy at Sam's or whatever, the sides are too tall and the meat sets down in them too much. And it acts as like a, a block a shield. It's yeah. a shield. It's shielding the meat. So there's nothing wrong with having them on that wire rack. Uh, you definitely want to get it up off the bottom of the pan. You just don't want to block the meat. So you you know they they make them. You can buy them from like uh, Restaurant Depot or order them from Amazon or re Restaurant Supply or something. But it's a shallower aluminum pan, or use a sheet pan covered full with the wire rack over it. But the wire rack is, man, we, I mean, those are just wire cooling racks. I started calling them pork racks and chicken racks because I used them for meat, not just baking cookies or breads or whatever. Yeah. I think they're perfect for uh, putting a whole piece of meat on it and then moving it from the from the counter to the grill, turning it on the grill, getting it off the grill. It's much easier to grab it and you're not handling the meat. You're handling the rack. So stuff stays together better. Even glazing. A lot of times I now we glaze it for glazing. When we, gla when we glaze, I'll put aluminum foil over that rack to keep it clean, cleaner, and then put my meat right on it so nothing sticks to it. Oh, that's the only bad thing about those wire racks. 
they are dishwasher safe and they'll last a while. But when you start putting acidic glazes and sauces and stuff on them, I don't care how you wash them off or spray them with cooking spray. Eventually, they're going to corrode and they're going to get funky. But I mean, I use them. A, I mean, I use them. Get a pretty good bit of use out of them. Yeah. They're not going to last forever, but that I mean, they're cheap too. Yeah, that yeah. ten dollar rack will last us two years. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. Before it gets funky. Oh yeah. And I don't definitely think. use those racks, and there's nothing wrong with the racks in the pan. It's going to save your grill too. But know this: the pan restricts the airflow. Now, just having the meat on the rack and the rack on the grate does not restrict it. Every, everything can flow through it. But once you set that rack down in some kind of pan, whether it's a thin baking sheet or a thick wall, you know, a tall walled aluminum pan, you're creating baffles and the air is not flowing good and you're taking up way more space. So take that into account. It can, it can, on a smaller grill, it's going to change your airflow, which is going to change your grill temp. Your grills are going to, you know, you're going to need more fuel sometime when you restrict that airflow. It's going to change your times. So just take that in mind that you're blocking stuff up the more space you're taking up with the pan too. But it's just a nice little tip to help. Yeah, make your but it really does easier. keep your, yeah, it keeps your, keeps your grill clean. You spend more money on pans. That's why I like the bacon pan with the aluminum foil. Well, Malcolm, that's all I have for you today. Hey, uh, appreciate everybody hanging out with us. It's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. Hey, if you guys want to check out some of our TikTok recipes, head on over to hqshop.com. You can use the search bar and search for pretty much any of them that we have coming out lately. And if you want to check out his other recipes, make sure you all head on over to howtobbqwrite.com. Yep. If subscribe you... to subscribe on YouTube and How to Barbecue Right on every channel, right? You got, you got it. it. That's all you got to do. All right. Well, we'll be back next week, right, Shell? We gone. We gone. <laughs> <laughs>